Topic four, tax loss carry forwards. Tax loss carry forwards, as outlined in topic one, they exist when there is a taxable loss in any particular year that cannot be, or is simply not, utilized to offset tax paid in prior years. Tax loss carrybacks are simpler in that they are realized and recognized for accounting purposes at the same time. This results in a receivable which is immediately recorded. For a carry forward, recognition occurs only if the use of this carry forward is probable. Let's look at our example back from topic two. JBC had a tax loss of 375,000, but only used 350,000 through its carry back. This is summarized here in the table as well. Let's assume the use of the 25,000 remaining is probable and should be recognized. The tax rate today is 32%. Therefore, the entry for this receivable, which is really a deferred income tax asset for the carry forward portion, and the resulting, the net income tax expense is as follows. We still have the income tax receivable, which we calculated in topic one's video of $101,900. We have the deferred income tax asset of 8,000. This represents the $25,000 of the carry forward times a 32% tax rate. And the net income tax expense, therefore, is 1,000 and nine, permit $109,900. Notice I said expense. It's a credit to an expense account, so this could just as easily say income tax recovery. So a negative expense would be referred to in complete or proper form as an income tax recovery, and this would be on your income statement. When determining whether to recognize a carry forward as an asset, it can be difficult to determine if it is probable. Some types of evidence which would support the, the assessment of probable are as follows. Please note that this is not an exhaustive list, but a paraphrased excerpt from relevant, relevant guidance under IFRS. One can look at the company's history of probability insofar as that it would indicate future profits will occur. Was the current taxable loss a result of an unusual event, for example, a fire? And conversely, some indicators could also indicate that this would not be a probable event, that is, that it would not be probable that this tax loss carry forward could be utilized. For example, if a company previously had tax losses expire without being claimed, that would support it not being probable. As well as the company will probably run losses for, for several years. So that is that the reason why the company is in a current tax loss position is pervasive and there's no kind of future expectation that they'll turn it around anytime soon. In all subsequent years, the company must reassess each reporting date if the carry forward is still probable. And if it is not, then it is written off to income tax expense. Let's look at a question. JBC Corp has just incurred a taxable loss in the amount of $12,000. There is only a single loss in the past three years, which is a $4,000 taxable loss in the prior year. The company's controller would like to recognize the remaining carry forward as an asset. The company has a new product rolling out next year that is expected to be very successful. The company also has a pending lawsuit in which a judgment against the company would likely force the company into bankruptcy. The company's lawyer estimates the likelihood that this company wins a lawsuit is about 50%. True or false, using your professional judgment, the company should recognize the carry forward as an asset? A, true, or B, false?
if you said be false, we agree. So in this instance, even though there is a potential for future profits due to the new product, uh, it is overwhelming that uh, the company will be forced into bankruptcy. Um, you know, it's likely that the company could be forced in bankruptcy. It's a pending threat. Maybe they'd settle. Maybe, um, you know, there's just a lot of risk around here and that they're going to turn it around with this potential new product. There hasn't been any support for revenue projections. I'm not given a lot here other than a big, scary lawsuit and some losses in the current year. So with that, you know, using my professional judgment, it is not probable that the company will be able to benefit from this carry forward. And therefore, they should not recognize this as a deferred income tax asset in the current year. It's a tricky one. Thanks for sticking out. And we have one more video in this series. I'll see you in the next one.